Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Massive Tutorials, continuing with our feature today, looking at this left panel of Massive. So we've already taken a look at the wavetables, the wavetable position control, and the spectrum, bend, and format modes, this intensity control. I'm going to move on and look at the modulation oscillator in this tutorial. I'll post up links in the comments section of this tutorial to the videos looking at the wavetables and the intensity control and the other modes we can have. So I'll just say very briefly, this is not a how to make this kind of sound tutorial, how to make this bass sound or that lead sound. Got a lot of that stuff covered on MassiveSynth.com in various different electronic genres. So come and check us out on the website for more specific bass sound tutorials. This is a tutorial focused on how this modulation oscillator works and I'm going to be looking at the various different modes available here. So we'll start off, we can turn this on here, this modulation oscillator and let's load up a wavetable in the oscillator one slot. Go for this Flenders too. So let's stack up a couple of these Flenders 2 wavetables and then we'll get into this modulation oscillator. So dip it down a couple of octaves. Maybe add a square wave in there as well. So we've got quite a basic sound together. So we turn this modulation oscillator on. And then we have these four different modes for, to select from and we can apply these modes to any one of the free oscillators or the filter FM, filter frequency modulation, we can apply to either of the two filters. So if we go for this ring mod first, ring modulation, we can use this to apply a kind of ringy sort of bell type quality to one of the oscillators. So let's, let's have a look here. We'll turn it on by applying it to one of these oscillators. So I click on one, I'm now applying ring modulation to oscillator one. You can see what that's bringing to the sound here. Because I got the sound quite pitched down. I'm applying ring modulation to oscillator one. I can now apply it to oscillator two. more of a subtle effect on oscillator 2 and then oscillator 3 the square wave it's kind of bringing more of a sort of ringy bell type quality to that square wave so this is quite a useful tool for just maybe just kind of bringing a bit of vibe to, to some of your sounds a bit of a belly sort of quality and the other thing I haven't mentioned on offer in the modulation oscillator is this pitch control. And this is where things get a bit more interesting. So, so we use this pitch control now. We're applying ring modulation to oscillator 3. Let's move this pitch control up and down a bit. So you can actually apply pitched ring modulation to one of the oscillators, which is a pretty powerful way of kind of designing sounds in massive. So, so if I go plus 24 on the pitch, that's, that's plus two octaves. Or detune it slightly. down two octaves so we can use that pitch control to if we're applying one of these modes to an oscillator we can use that pitch and we say it's oh it's too bright sounding we can actually use that pitch control to control the kind of deepness or the brightness of one of these modes on offer here so let's have a look let's load up one of the massive presets the factory presets in here Load up a synth lead in here. Something quite bright, and let's apply a bit of ring modulation to this sound. Take this, let's reset this modulation oscillator here. So let's apply some ring modulation to oscillator one. 
You can hear that kind of like brightness it's bringing to the sounds. Quite nice. And try pitching it. So it's quite a powerful tool, uh, this ring modulation. I'm going to move on now and look at the phase mode. It's probably one of the most popular of these four modes on offering a modulation oscillator and it's very useful for just bringing a bit of attitude, a bit of aggression, just kind of distorting sounds really. So let's set up a sound very quickly here. Use a square wave, pitch it down two octaves. Make it nice and bassy. Add another square. I think a smooth square this time. Again, down two octaves. Uh, and it's quite bassy, so let's make it monophonic. And let's bring a filter into the equation. So I'm going to add a DAF filter. I'm going to put an envelope on this filter as well. Set that glide up. So got this kind of bass sound here, a bit of a sort of aggressive, maybe slightly garagey bass sound. And let's turn this modulation oscillator on and let's look at this phase mode that we have here. So let's apply it to oscillator one and see what it does to the sound. It gives us that really metallic sort of tone that I must have heard on that sort of tone on so many dubstep, garagey kind of tunes, you know. Really nice. So let's pitch this down now, see what happens. Or down again, maybe another octave. Maybe go up an octave. Two octaves. And you can hear the scope for just sort of sound design, just using this modulation oscillator. Let's now apply it to oscillator two. So it does to the sound there. Um, and what's also really cool is when you're using this pitch, if you're taking it up an octave, then it kind of, the, the, the sound stays quite clean, but you can actually create sort of weird kind of chords by maybe going up plus seven. Plus seven semitones or, you know, plus 19 so it's plus 12 plus one octave and then plus another seven or go plus five and just get a little bit more kind of brittle then and you can get some really interesting sounds even if you just detune this phase mode you've got a really cool tone and another thing is you can modulate this or any of these controls here position, the ring modulation position, the filter frequency modulation, you can you can modulate these controls. So I could actually apply this same envelope to modulate this phase here. Got quite a cool sound, increase the resonance. So really powerful, the phase mode. Let's have, let's look at another example of using this phase mode. I'm going to load up this strontium wavetable, which from the bat is pretty nice sounding. Let's pitch it down one octave. Modulation oscillator, turn it on. Get into this phase mode. So you could use an LFO there. Quite interesting, maybe. We could try pitching this down. You see what it's doing there? It's just, it's great for really just bringing a bit of kind of vibe and a bit of aggression to, to sounds. Tune. Let's detune it. So yeah, phase mode, very powerful. So next mode we have here 
is the position. So this modulates the position of the wavetable. So it's modulating this kind of wavetable position control. And it's very similar. So if we load up something in here, drive one. And so turn this modulation oscillator off for now. Let's move the wavetable position control, see what happens to the sound. And now let's turn this on. And we've got this modulation oscillator, we've got it on position and it's modulating oscillator one. So very similar to just moving the wavetable position control, maybe kind of it's not having as large an impact as if you were to move this control. But again, use this in combination with the pitch. And you can still use that position mode to create some pretty cool sounds. I'm going to load up a, a massive factory preset now again and just see what we can do with that position mode. So let me go for synth leads again. Something like that, a bit cleaner sounding, maybe take off the delay. Uh, and let's reset this modulation oscillator and let's look at this position. So we've got it turned on. Supply it to oscillator one. It's hardly having any effect on the sound. So let's use this pitch to bit more subtle there but we're adding some kind of slight detuning to that first oscillator and you know this is the the volume control for the this modulation you can turn this up and down go for oscillator two so again that position mode is really useful and you can I mean there it's sort of bringing a bit of kind of thickness and a bit of detuning to the sound and yeah it could be used for, for all kinds of really cool effects and I think that's one it's probably less like the phase mode and the ring mode ring, and the ring modulations I mean especially the phase you just straight away you hear a kind of impact on the sound when you turn that on this position mode is quite a bit more subtle so I tend to use this in combination with the pitch to to get some really nice effects going so the last mode on offer here filter frequency modulation and Let's just reset this sound, get a new sound up. Difference in here is we can only apply it to one or two, meaning either filter one or filter two. And there's actually some filters we can't apply it to. So like the screen filter, you notice number two there kind of goes blacked out because you can't use it for the screen filter. You can't use it for the comb filter either. Or I think, yeah, the band pass, band reject, and the double notch. Oh no, you can use it for the double notch. And I think it's just the nature of these these filters. You can't apply this filter frequency modulation to them, but all the other ones you can. So let's set up a bit of a basic sound and get into this filter frequency modulation here. So load up a DAF filter. And I'm gonna put an envelope on this filter. And just with this simple sound setup, let's turn this modulation oscillator on against this filter frequency modulation. So turn it on and applying it to filter one. And you can hear straight away, I mean, it's kind of going to be doing a similar thing, moving this up and down. Similar to moving a cutoff frequency up and down. Again, not as drastic. I think it does actually bring a little bit of distortion and character to the sound as well, the filter frequency modulation. And 
again. Let's use this pitch. You hear what that's doing to the sound. Actually distorting the sound a little bit, yeah, using... Could I apply this envelope to the filter frequency modulation as well? Detune it a bit. And yeah, again, I mean, some of these things I never used for quite a while after getting into Massive, especially the position mode and the filter frequency mode. But I think they're really powerful and I think they're really useful I think they're really useful for sound design. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, please get in touch. I also get yourself subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. And yeah, thanks for watching. All right, cheers guys. Bye.